For the past year now, I've made my podcast with a company called Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First, it's free. That's right. It doesn't cost you anything to make your own podcast. They have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your own podcast right from the computer or your own phone. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and every other place. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's really easy. You'll have your podcast up and running in no time. Go to Anchor. Welcome to episode 54 of Beer in Front. I'm your host. No, I'm not your host. I'm not doing anything this week, but... I'm going to get out of the way in a minute. I'm really super excited about this show this week. Now, originally, Ruby and I, we were going to have our second vaccines this week. And, you know, we both heard that it kind of knocked you out. So I had the idea I'm going to ask on Twitter and I'm going to put it out on the podcast for other people to talk about their beer in front. And it was a terrific response. I have... 15 people that are coming up. It's a good variety of people. The one thing I'm super happy about is that it's not just a bunch of bearded white guys talking about beer. So there's a good variety of people. I love all of you that, you know, submitted a piece. I know a couple of you couldn't get it done this week, but I'm going to have you on later. And this might be a recurring theme, like every now and then just have someone else talk about their beer in front as well. So I'm going to shut up. I'm going to get out of the way and welcome to your beer in front. Hi, everyone. I am Ruby. I'm Dave's wife. And I'm actually not that big of a drinker, but Dave wanted me to share my rating for pretty much most food and drink, which is either gross, eh, or delicious. And I had this beer today that actually falls under the delicious category. It is from Bulldog Beer Company, their Underbite series called Positive Mental Attitude Goza. So when I do drink, I like to drink um, Gozas because I find that they're salty and for some reason I love salty beer. I also like sours as long as they're not too funky and don't taste like band-aids. But um, this one was a nice surprise. So this is flavored with peach, mango, and acai. And uh, Dave wanted me to make sure that I talked about the color, which is actually beer colored. I don't know, dark red. Um... And the taste is just really good, smooth, salty. Uh, I would recommend it to somebody who doesn't really drink beer very often. And I don't know that there's much else that I can tell you about it. If you want to hear about making cards, I could talk to you about that all day. But beer, not so much. Anyway, if you like Goza, try the Positive Mental Attitude from the Underbite series by Bulldog Beer Company. Hi, Dave. It's Brian. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to come on your podcast. I hope you're enjoying some well-deserved time away, and hopefully that second shot isn't as bad for you as some people say. A little bit about me. I'm a lifelong St. Louis native and passionate about our local craft beer scene. Once the pandemic began, I took it as an opportunity to share my experiences through social media while highlighting some of the excellent beer available from my hometown. As of this recording, I'm enjoying Wandering Lights from St. Louis-based Wellspent Brewing Company, which just recently celebrated its third anniversary. Wandering Lights is a blended Saison. The base comes from another quality Wellspent beer, no matter how far, which can be described as a light, fluffy Saison with a dry finish. The blend's remainder comes from a two-year barrel-aged Saison with a unique dry and oaky finish with orange and lemon-lime profiles. 
These two saisons come together perfectly to produce a moderately dry yet bright and soft texture, bursting with subtle fruity notes of passion fruit, guava, orange, and lemon lime. This is an amazingly drinkable beer that I can't seem to get enough of. More recently, Wellspent won a gold medal at Fobab in the dark strong beer category for Back to Back, which is a 12% Belgian quad that was first aged in red wine barrels and then in brandy barrels. While I can't currently comment on the beer's profile myself, I am fortunate enough to still have a bottle sitting away cellaring, and I look forward to breaking it open on a special occasion. I think the perfect way to celebrate would be after receiving my second COVID shot. Wellspent easily ranks in my top St. Louis brewery list. It's in good company with others like Second Shift, Perennial, Side Project, and Narrow Gauge, as well as many others. Should you find yourself in St. Louis, you should really check them out and add them to your list. You can check out Wellspent at wellspentbeer.com and on Twitter and Instagram at wellspentbeer. Also, if you enjoyed hearing me talk about St. Louis beers, feel free to follow me on either Twitter or Instagram at BrianMSTL. Cheers. Hi guys, my name is Alana um, and I am 113KC. So what I do, <laughs> um, I share information in regards to the Kansas City Metro um, beer scene. So not necessarily, it's more localized. So any new um, local brewery that's opening or any specific um, event happening at a local brewery or um, new beer that's tapping or, you know, things like that. Um, I share that information just to get the word out um, of our, for our breweries. And I mean, the past year, not many events have been happening, but they still would do, you know, to go beer and they're still brewing beer and all that stuff. And I would still share that. Um, but basically if there's any, um, local beer news that you wanted to keep up with, I'm your girl. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Um, and that's 113KC. And with the whole Metro, um, there's so many breweries that we have at least 20. Um, so it's very hard to narrow down exactly what brewery is my favorite because I like bits and pieces, you know, uh, there's something that I love at most of them. Um, I think it's easier to tell you which ones I'm not too fond of versus which ones are my favorite. Um, because there's too many to count that I love, but one of the places that I always feel that I go to quite a bit used to go to quite a bit. Uh, I haven't really gone out in the past year. Hmm. Probably Torn Label down in the Crossroads. Um, that was a frequent brewery that I visited all the time. Um, super tiny place. So it was definitely a, a cheers type atmosphere. But it's great. One of their brewer, brewers, excuse me, is uh, a woman. So that is amazing. Um, and she brews amazing beers. Um, and they always have something for everyone whether it be something, you know, a classic style, a brown L or something experimental, um, there's always something. And it's just great, great atmosphere, great people. But anyway, if you want to know more about the Kansas City local brewery scene, feel free to give me a follow on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And that is 113KC. Thank you. Bye. Hi, my name is Bill Gegenheimer. I'm from Las Vegas. My Twitter handle is at Bill Geg, same with my untapped handle, but on Twitter you might know me as Grandpa Beer. I want to thank Dave for the invitation to review a beer for his podcast that I listen to all the time. So Vegas is finally growing into its beer scene, and there are a lot of good breweries starting to pop up here. Uh, there are a couple of major areas where there are breweries. The Arts District downtown has about seven different breweries within walking distance, plus about three uh, beer bars. And in Henderson, where I live in the southeast, there are five different breweries, all of which I like, and some other options as well. One of those breweries creates the beer that I'm going to review today. 
This brewery is Astronomy Ale Works in Henderson, and the beer is Return of the Citra Rye IPA. This is, as it sounds, an American IPA. It is 6.7% ABV and 70 IBU. So let me crack it open. So that's good. It pours a wonderful amber color. It's completely uh, clear. There's no haziness to this beer at all. Kicks up a good head, especially if you pour it the way I just did. So it has a nice uh, floral smell. It's incredibly smooth. Um, it's very well balanced. It's hoppy, as the 70 IBUs would indicate, but not overly so. It is a very drinkable beer, and let me try some while I'm doing this. Oh yeah, that's really good. This beer, the history of this beer, there was a brewery in Vegas called Joseph James. There was a production only brewery and they had a Citra Rye IPA that was quite popular in town. Well, Joseph James has closed and one of their brewers actually works at Astronomy now. And while this isn't an exact copy of that beer, it is very reminiscent of it and has become very popular in town. The can art on this beer is fantastic, too, by the way. It's uh, got an alien on it with a, a single eye and tentacles all over the place. Astronomy is very much, of course, into astronomy and science fiction, so that very much shows on this can. Again, the beer is called Return of the Citra, and it's a rye IPA. And that is my beer in front. And once again, I want to thank Dave for the invitation and hope to see you all soon. Hey, Beer in Front listeners. This is Tandy, and I'm one of the hosts of the Beer Ladies podcast. I'm calling all the way from Dublin in Ireland, and I wanted to share one of my favorite Irish beers with you today. It's my Beer in Front. This one is by Kinnegar Brewing. They are based in the northern tip of Ireland on the west coast um, in Donegal. And this beer is called the Black Bucket. It's a black rye IPA and sits at 6.5% ABV. It pours a rich, dark, opaque black with a frothy, pillowy, creamy even off-white head. Um, Sounds inviting, doesn't it? <laughs> um, aroma and flavor-wise, it's um, it's complex and rich, but also bright. So it's got a, a mix of those kind of lovely citrusy New World hops that we all love and a spicy, roasty grain bowl. It's an absolutely beautiful beer and one of many from our great Irish craft breweries. This one is perfect for the sometimes dreary weather we get over here, and uh, especially since we're still in lockdown. On that note, um, while in lockdown for the first time, um, a bunch of my friends and I started the Beer Ladies podcast. We're from all over the world, and each week we interview women in the industry, chat about beer history, learn about styles and ingredients, and generally have the crack while enjoying some amazing beer. You can find us on all of your podcast apps, um, from anywhere from Stitcher to Spotify, as well as on YouTube, if you prefer to watch along. Just search for the Beer Ladies Podcast, and we'll see you each Friday. It's happy hour. <laughs> Till then, cheers. Hey guys, this is Oscar Witcher from The Everything Show. Proud to be on Beer in Front. Dave, thank you for the opportunity. I am going to spotlight Lagunitas Brewing Company, originally brewed out here in California. I'm in Southern California, about five, ten minutes away from Disneyland. Petaluma, California is where Lagunitas was founded. That's in Northern California. But it's also brewed in one other location, my buddy's hometown of Chicago, Illinois. And so today... The beer in front of me is going to be the Lagunitas Hazy Wonder IPA. It's one of these brews that's starting to come out for uh, the time of year, right? Spring, getting into summer. Uh, things are starting to open up. I hope you guys are remaining safe and covering up those traps if you guys happen to go out there. 
Hazy Wonder IPA is the beer in front for me. I'm going to give this one a crack open. I call on my show, we call drinking a beer on the show, cracking one open. But again, I'm on beer in front. So this week's beer in front is the Hazy Wonder IPA. Let me give this one a shot. Isn't that like just the best sound in the world right there? I mean, sexy. Let me give it a try now. Excuse me. Oh, man, that is fantastic. I mean, there is really nothing like the flavor of a, a, of an IPA. Really nothing compares. And I know a lot of people complain about the bitterness and the aftertaste. And like, you know what, man, if you're going to be into beer, suck it up, get into it, get used to it, try more of them, and you, you're just going to enjoy it. Lagunitas Hazy Wonder IPA brewed with Sabro, Citra, Cashmere, and Comet hops. Amazing tasting beer. Great color here. Make certain you go out there and give it a shot. Lagunitas is one of my favorite breweries. Uh, it's a lot bigger than what um, a, a lot of uh, you know people probably tend to drink now. But nonetheless, they put out some really good brews. Go out there. Find Lagunitas Hazy Wonder IPA. It's in that pastel colored can. Yellow and pinks and, and teals and stuff. Really nice looking can. Very nice looking brew. Amazing tasting brew as well. Guys, thank you very much. Dave, especially you, thank you for the opportunity to be on Beer in Front, one of your guest hosts this week. And if you guys have an opportunity, I'm going to shamelessly plug here. I think it's okay. Dave, I hope it's okay. Go out there, give my podcast a shot, The Everything Show, all right? Dave, thank you very much. Beer in Front kicks butt. Thanks, man. Hey, y'all. My name is Ashley Monroe. Um, and I am better known as Brood Black Girl on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook. First of all, I want to thank Dave for inviting me to be on his podcast. Beer in Front is uh, so dope, and I love everything that you're doing, Dave, and I just thank you again for allowing me to be on your podcast. So I live in Birmingham, Alabama, and... The best brewery voted by the people who live here in Birmingham is Trim Tap Brewing Company, and that happens to be where I also work. So there's no bias here, but um, maybe just a little bit, but we're pretty awesome. So, you know, that's how it goes. So I'm actually about to crack open one of our new IPAs that we just came out with. It is called Queen Bee, and it's actually a triple IPA. And it's brewed with honey, mosaic hops, and African queen hops. And I kind of hold this a little bit close to my heart because I helped with the research and development of this. I feel like um, we needed something a little different. And so African queen hops just kind of jumped out at me. And I loved like the flavor profile of it. I love the juiciness um, that they give beers and so i decided to just go ahead and uh do this one for the triple ipa now this triple ipa if you're anywhere in like the south um and you can pick up this beer i will forewarn you that it is very smooth it is very easy to drink and it does not seem like it's ten and a half percent but to me, that's part of the fun. Um, but I just like to let people know that ahead of time because it doesn't drink like it. So you may stand up and instantly almost fall over. So that's just a heads up for that. But I love this beer, guys. Like, I'm going to take a sip right now. Mm, like the creaminess from the mosaic hops and then like the honey kind of gives like a, a nice like balancing sweetness to it it's just it's delicious <laughs> it's so hard to not drink more than one because of how good it is um and it has a beautiful like juicy looking um 
appearance and the can is beautiful it's yellow which is my favorite color and i don't know i just love this beer so much i i'm really happy that we did a triple ipa because i don't see many out there and that's something that i feel like needs to happen more even though you know some people go more towards sessions that's fine um, I'm a high gravity girl. I always have been. Um, that's kind of how I got into IPAs to begin with is because it's, it's high gravity. I can have one and I can feel a buzz and not worry about, you know, drinking too many calories or drinking too much and feeling too full. So, uh, that's why IPAs have always been my favorite, but I love the different kind of ways that you can make IPAs. And I love the different kind of ways that you can add flavors to them to make them more distinct and more unique and stuff like that. So honey and IPA, I am all for it. Um, and I just, I can't stop drinking it. I can't, <laughs> I can't get it out. I can't, but I love it so much. And I, and again, thank you, Dave, for, uh, allowing me to come on and just talk about this beer and talk about trim tab. And uh, I hope you guys can follow me. I, again, am Brewed Black Girl, B-R-E-W-E-D, Black Girl, um, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So I hope to see you guys and uh, give me a follow. Bye. Hey, everybody. My name is Mash. I am from a podcast called Hops Geek News, a podcast that we talk beer, comic books, TV shows, you name it. We got it. Just search Hops News. There are new episodes weekly. The beer in front of me right now is called That Purple Stuff. It's from Barbarian Brewing out of Boise, Idaho. It is a 6% ABV sour fruited with 440 pounds of blueberry, strawberry, blackberry, and raspberry fruit puree. When you pour it, you get a delicious deep purple color, hence the name That Purple Stuff, that just looks absolutely amazing. And the best part is, is it tastes even better. When you taste it, you don't get an individual fruit. You kind of get a blend of the all the fruits together. And to be honest, it tastes exactly kind of like a smoothie. It goes down really smooth. It is absolutely phenomenal. Again, they're from Barbarian Brewing in Idaho. They make crazy new stuff every single week. Barbarians from Conan the Barbarian. And they make really good sours. So I highly suggest if you're in Boise, check them out. Also, big shout out to Beer in Front for having us come on talk about this beer. Thank you all so much and cheers. Hello, everybody. This is Christina or Christina Rose from Love Christina Rose over on Instagram. And Beer in Front asked me to share my favorite or a favorite beer slash brewery. Um, so if you know me, um, it should be of no surprise. I have selected the Dovetail Pilsner. So we're gonna crack it open. Let me get a little ASMR up in here, some pouring action. Love that sound. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it very well. But um, Dovetail is a brewery in the like Ravenswood, North Center kind of area of Chicago, north side of Chicago. They focus mostly on continental European style beers. So what that means is they mostly brew a bunch of lagers, which I love. Um, and then they also have a really cool spontaneous wild fermentation program. So they'd make a lot of like wild, sometimes sour kind of beers, um, which I know a lot of other people are into as well. One of my favorite beers from them is their Pilsner. Um, I am a Pilsner seeker just in general. I think if a brewery can make a great Pilsner, that says a lot about the brewery. So their Pilsner is delicious. Let's take let's let's take a sip. But well, let's take a smell first. So you get that like crackery, a little bit of sweet, malty kind of um, scent in the aroma. Um, and there's a little bit of that, like, hop. I think they use, like, a noble hop. It's not in a can, but I'm, that's a normal Pilsner hop, um, which is delicious. So on the, on the taste. Yeah. You get, it's very, very clean is what I would say. Pretty floral. A little bit of that, like, Pilsner hop kind of spice that comes out. 
which I really love. Um, on the can, it does say Pilsner, spicy, full-bodied, satisfying. I would agree with the satisfying. It's lovely. 4.7% uh, ABV, so you could drink this all day. Um, and the tap room has, the indoor tap room has been closed for most of the last year, but um, they've been doing everything they can to have a patio open throughout the year. So their front patio just opened um, recently this spring. So if you're in the Chicago area, you like loggers, go check them out. Um, if you want to find me, like I said, I'm at Love Christina Rose on Instagram. I also have a YouTube of the same name that is being underutilized. Um, and follow me on Twitter at Christina Rose 33 if you are interested in that. Um, come follow me for Freshy Friday. And thank you so much, Beer in Front, for the invite. I hope to hear from you soon. Bye. Thanks, Dave, for having me on Beer in Front. Figured I'd give everyone a little bit of a, a detour here and talk about cider. Um, cider, of course, is not brewed like beer. It is made like wine. And like wine, fruit plays a huge role in the character and flavor of a cider. And so today, I'd like to talk to you about Uncle John's Cider from Central Michigan. Now, this cider company has been there. Um, they've only been making cider for about 20 years commercially. Uh, however, the same family has been growing apples on that orchard for well over 100 years. And indeed, some of the trees on the property are over 100 years old, and they are still kicking fruit out. Some of that fruit ends up in their premium cider blends, uh, one of which is called Deep Roots, and that features Cortland and Macintosh and Baldwin apples on 110-year-old apple trees spaced 40 feet apart. It's like a magical grove out of your deepest memories. Uh, it's really a special place. Uh, now, the other types of apples, uh, uh, those are sort of the American heirloom apple varieties that make up the hallmark of some of the, 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 the coolest blends out there. Uh, however, Mike also got some cuttings from an orchard on the East Coast. And those cuttings were taken from an orchard that got several European varieties about 40 years ago. And he moved them over to the East Coast. Apple varieties like Yarlington Mill, uh, Dabinette, special varieties that were not really a, a, a legacy crop here in America. Those types of apples lend tannin uh, and texture and, 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 and complexity to to what typically in America are either culinary uh, derived fruits or, or fruits that have high acid for pies and applesauce and things like that. What Mike does is he took those cuttings uh, out of the East Coast Orchard, which is Poverty Lane Orchards, which is where Farnham Hill ciders uh, are derived. And visiting with him, uh, he brought those cuttings into his Michigan Orchard about 20 years ago grafted those into his main block of orchard. And Mike's main block, his trees are about 50 years old. So he's cutting these things about 20 years ago into his, his main block of orchards. And then they start to grow and those new apple varieties grow forth from uh, those cut points. And now 20 years later, he has some really cool bittersweet apple crops. And what he does is he blends those together in a drink called Melded, M-E-L-D-E-D, -E -D, Melded, like blending. And he calls it melded because in honor of his grandmother who used to play uh, canasta and uh, canasta was really important to have a melded deck. You have to have a really good blended deck. And so he started to say, well, I'm getting these dozens and dozens of apple varieties that not a lot of cider makers are using. And, and so he will take that and blend it together to create something unique. Again, this blend of English, French, uh, and American bittersweet fruit mixed with some of his American heirloom apple that has a high acid content, and he comes out in this premium cider called Melded. Now, you won't find it at Binnie's, but you will find it at a lot of cool mom and pop shops all over the city. Uh, places like Bottles and Cans uh, on Lincoln Avenue. They're also extremely affordable when you look at high-end premium ciders uh, that you can get in the marketplace. So really excited to share that with people. Um, it's very dry and really approachable. And most, I would suggest this type of a cider for your friends who tell you they don't like cider uh, because I have yet to find people that don't like it. Some people might not be their jam. Um, they might prefer other types of drinks, but if you have any sort of preference for dry white wines, high acid Proseccos, things that are really uh, uh, thirst quenching, this is right there in the same vein.
as the weather warms up, we are gearing up to reopen the Northman down on the Riverwalk uh, downtown. We don't have a firm opening date because, of course, weather and logistics always uh, will play havoc uh, with the best laid plans. But sometime this spring, the Northman on the Riverwalk will reopen and feature cider from Uncle John's, um, as well as dozens and dozens of other producers uh, from all over the world. So hopefully I'll get a chance to see you guys out and about in the city as things begin to reopen. And I look forward to seeing you all on the Riverwalk. We can raise a glass of cider and uh, say cheers. My name is Claire, otherwise known as American Blonde Ale. My friends call me ABBA in real life now. I appreciate when people call me ABBA online. I think it's really cute. Um, I have sticker, all that stuff. But you can find me um, on TikTok. I'm ABBA Talkin, A-B-A-T-O-K-K-I-N. On Twitter, I'm ABBA Tweetin. On Instagram, I'm American Blonde Ale. And then my website, I refuse to buy the domain. Well, I was fighting a different company because they own the domain and they wouldn't sell it to me. It was a whole big thing. So my website is a complicated name, but all the links for that is in my bio, of all my other socials. So I'm from Long Island, New York, born and raised. I went to college in New York City. And my, so I'm currently working at Great South Bay Brewery. I do tastings and samplings for them. Um, a little bit of extra work here and there, but I love being there. But I feel like if I plug them, that's just like a shameless plug because I do work there. So I would say one of my favorite breweries on Long Island would either be Barrier in Oceanside or, or Garvey's Point. Um, which is on the uh, the North Shore of Long Island. Um, I went to Garbage Point for the first time the other day, actually. I'd never been there. I just usually pick up their cans at distributors. And it was a ton of fun. It is on the water. There's a canal. So you get to see all the boats. So in the summertime, it's going to be beautiful. There's an apartment complex right there. So it's probably bumping in the summer. I went on a rainy evening, so probably not the best time. But I still had a lot of fun. Um, Sour Batch, they have a Sour Batch series. And I'm a big fan of it. The Sour Batch Strawberry Cream is probably my favorite of the series. And then at Barrier, everyone likes the Barrier money. Um, it comes in a gold can. I, once again, they have a white ale with a rhino on it. And rhino is my favorite animal. That's probably my favorite beer from Barrier. But um, Long Island has a ton of great breweries. And the best part is that you can hit a bunch in a day because there's a lot of pocket towns. So out by like St. James and Patchogue, there's a bunch right there. In Bayshore, where Great South Bay is, there's a bunch of breweries in that zone. Um, and then on the North Shore, there's a bunch in the same kind of area. So you can hit a ton of breweries in one day. Um, and then I live on the South shore of Long Island. So there aren't a ton of breweries down here, but we just had Sand City, which used to be in the Huntington Northport area that just moved down to Lindenhurst, which is right near me. Um, so I haven't got a chance to stop in there, but that's definitely a must hit. And Sand City is a lot of people's favorite brewery on Long Island. And then Sekatog Brewery opened up uh, last year, the year before that in West Islip. So that one's also a fan favorite. Once again, if anyone wants to follow me, check me out, uh, send me a DM and tell me you listen to this podcast. I would appreciate that. So if you want to do that, my Instagram is at American Blondale. My Twitter is at Abba Tweetin. My TikTok, which I really wanted to take off. So please follow me on TikTok is at Abba Talkin. And then I have a website. Um, the link is in all of my other social media handles and I uh, hope to see you there. Greetings from Northeast Pennsylvania. My name is Dave Carey, and I'm the father of Lauren and John from the Beard Owl podcast. I'm partially responsible for their love of both beer and Weird Al. My beer drinking experience dates back to the summer of 1972. I was just 10 years old when I tasted my first beer. The 1972 Agnes flood had just occurred, and every house was under construction. At that time, I had a neighbor with a half keg of beer in his garage. The door was wide open all of the time. I think it was broken. My friends and I would sneak into the garage during the day when nobody was around and fill plastic jugs of beer. I guess I was a jagoff at 10 years old for stealing beer. It was some of the worst tasting beer I ever had. It was called Bartels Beer. Bartels was originally from Edwardsville, Pennsylvania. It was acquired by the Lion Brewery in 1967. They are the maker of Stegmeier beer. If you're from Northeast Pennsylvania, you'd remember Stegmeier. ring a ling ding do the Stegmeier thing in the summertime. We would head over to the Black Diamond Bridge after we procured our beer. The Black Diamond was a railroad bridge that went over the mighty Susquehanna River. We would sit on the bridge abutments, and we would drink usually warm, flat beer. I thought it was how beer was supposed to taste. Man, was I wrong. Now let's fast forward to today. I'm going to talk about my beer in front. I have a 2019 Shipwreck Stout from Cunningham Brewing Company in Cunningham, Pennsylvania, about 20 miles south of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. That's correct. The pronunciation is Wilkes-Barre, not Wilkes-Barre, Wilkes-Barre. 
Shipwreck is a 21% ABV beer. The beer is a limited biannual release. This particular beer was brewed on New Year's Day 2018. It was aged for well over a year in a cognac barrel. Its a high alcohol content is ba balanced by sweet malt, cognac, and other oak flavors. Actually, it's got a very nice oak aroma. I rated it a 5 on Untapped, and it is in my top 10 beers out of the 4,000 check-ins that I have. This beer is a nice after-dinner beer, or for a nightcap. I do not recommend drinking the entire bottle alone. This beer is meant to be consumed with friends. Warning, the beer is uncarbonated, flat, and is best served at room temperature. This brings me back full circle. I'm sitting here drinking a flat, warm beer. However, I procured it legitimately, I'm not pouring it out of a plastic jug, and I'm not under a train bridge on the mighty Susquehanna. Hi, everybody. This is Lauren from the Beard Out podcast, the podcast where my brother John and I talk about two of the greatest things in the world, beer and Weird Al Yankovic. Today, I'm just talking about beer. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. I was going to go to one of the many great local breweries that we have here, but I just didn't get a chance to do that. And so in the spirit of beer in front, I decided to just have one of the beers that I had in my fridge. So today I am drinking a beer called Abuse of Science 2 from Destination Unknown Beer Company in Bayshore, New York. It is delicious, first of all, but it is an Imperial IPA clocking in at an impressive and sneaky 11% ABV. You know, when you think about a really strong IPA like this one is, it can go a couple of ways, right? It could be super boozy, it can be really, really hoppy, but this doesn't taste like either one of those things. This beer was not brewed with any hops in the kettle, so it was completely dry hopped, right? And so it was dry hopped with Cryo Citra, Cryo Simcoe, Mateka, and Vic Secret hops, and it is so juicy. Like, I'm going to have to make sure I take my time with this beer because it is incredibly dangerous, but I like it, so... I guess I love danger. Danger is my middle name. No, it, it definitely isn't. I also want to thank Dave for giving his listeners and fans of the show the opportunity to share the beers that we happen to be having at the moment because it's so cool to hear what people are thinking about the beers that they're drinking at the time. Like what beer is in front of you and how do you feel about it? Beer should make you happy, right? I think that was, uh, that was Ben Franklin wasn't it? I don't know. I'm just waxing poetic now. You know, if you're a listener of Beer in Front, you've heard enough of me talk during the uh, Beard Owl in Front of Palooza that Dave and I had a couple of weeks back. I think I'm going to shut up now, but I do need to call Jag off on something because it's Beer in Front, so of course I do. And I'm not calling Jag off on any particular person at this point. I'm calling Jag off on Daylight Savings Time because We've been in it for a while now, and I'm still not right. So here's hoping my circadian rhythms line back up, and who knows? Maybe this beer will help. But anyway, I've been Lauren from the Beard Out Podcast, and uh, have a wonderful day. What is going on, everybody? Rod J from Rod J Beer Ventures in the house. Shout out to Dave Z. Glad to be another part of his show here on the Beer in Front podcast. Shouts out to him for getting his second vaccination and taking a week off. But hey, he asked about doing a segment about some of our favorite local beers. So I'm going to share with you one that I really enjoy from out here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And it comes from Mad Tree Brewing. Uh, they are one of our, I would say, top tier breweries out here in this location. And it is their Galaxy High Imperial IPA. You know, if you follow me on untapped and if you do you know i don't usually give a five out for many beers in fact in all the years i've probably been on there i'm probably still under 10 as far as the number i've actually given but this is one that i've actually given a five out of five to i mean it is a solid double ipa that comes in at nine and a half percent abv ibu level on it is 120 
but don't let that scare you into bitterness with the way it's malted out on this beer. It really has a nice smooth feel to it. They make mention of it having two Australian hops that they actually use, which are Galaxy and Topaz. And at malts, you're looking at the two row. You're looking at Vienna, Caramel, 40L, Carapils, and Dextrose also being involved. So you get a good amount of sweetness with it. Not overly dry and very smooth. You do have that hoppy feel. You do have some of that bitterness, but it balances very well out with the malt. So if you're looking for a nice beer to enjoy from Cincinnati, this right here is one of my top ones to actually pick. And if you're a brewer out there, you can go to the Mad Tree Brewing website. They actually provide the recipe in case you'd like to try to create it on your own as well. It is a limited edition beer. It comes out, I believe, around February or March every year. It comes out of four packs. Also, draft for some of the breweries that have the keg systems there you go dave get better look forward to talking to all you guys soon keep drinking those good craft beers remember there's always time to get your beer on cheers everybody hi i'm virginia thomas co-owner of beer miscuous a craft beer cafe and bottle shop located in the lakeview neighborhood of chicago we are a 100 percent employee-owned shop and have the largest craft beer selection in the city over 275 beers sold by the individual bottle or can, available for dine-in, pickup, or delivery. My beer in front this week is Alpi from Chicago's Hopewell Brewing, an Italian-style pilsner. If you're unfamiliar with Italian pilsners, they're basically dry-hopped German pilsners, usually utilizing classic European hops. With this beer, you get big floral, herbal, and slightly spicy notes from the hops, and the crackery malt base you expect from a pilsner, with the firm building bitterness that I love. It's well-balanced and crisp. I've been a Hopewell fan for a while now. I feel like they've really been putting out great beer after great beer, and this one is no exception. Thanks for having me, Dave. Cheers! All right, that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed putting this one together. I do want to thank, in order, Ruby from Ruby and Dave. I want to thank Brian, M-S-T-L. Thank you, Brian. Alana from 113KC. Bill from Grandpa Bill. Tandy from the Beer Ladies Podcast. Oscar from the Everything Show. Ashley from Brood Black Girl, Mash from Hops Geek News, Christina from Love Christina Rose, Cider Brian, Claire from American Blonde Ale, Dave Carey, Lauren from the Beard Ale Podcast, Rod J from Rod J's Beer Ventures, and Virginia from Beer Miscuous. I thank all of you so much. That was a lot of fun. We're going to have more of these coming up. Not that I'm taking off and letting other people run the show, but I think I am going to have, you know, and, and if you're interested, you know, let me know. I know a couple people couldn't get it done in time, and there's others. If you're interested in just doing a three-minute segment or you can come on and you'll talk about your favorite beer, I think this was a lot of fun. I'm having right now, real quick, Urban Night Imperial Stout from Crowns and Hops. This is a terrific Imperial. I want to thank my brother Ray Ray for sending this out to me from Vegas. That's episode 54 of Beer in Front. We will see you next week.